We are living at a time where there's this kind of almost like a, a chronic tragedy in our culture. There's this kind of rising tide of anxiety. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, living on the savannah or wherever we were, we were attuned to danger around us. We still got that. You know, we are attuned to whatever feels dangerous. And yet we're flooded with signals and lessons and news and expectations, which cause us to be constantly triggered. We don't have any space just to stop, and it's causing real mental health problems. Meditation should be a basic skill, it just helps us um, calm down, settle our minds, settle our biochemistry, so that we can actually just have some space just to come back to our true selves and not be caught up in the kind of craziness of modern life. My name is Yoko. I'm mainly now teaching yoga, but usually I do holistic therapy, like teaching how to live. With healthy way, natural way, body and mind and spirit. I've been very ill from the child. Every week I have to go to see the doctor or hospital. It's every day, it's not happy and very, very painful. Especially the mind always fear or anger or depression. But of course, life is keep going. I have to work or have to study. One point I said, is that it? Working and pay every month. And I get stories and stories and stories and go to the hospital, this circle. I went in the hospital and many medicine to my body. And at one point, my eyes become like rolling back, keep rolling back. I was scared. And I asked the doctor, please, something wrong. And I thought he's going to stop the medicine. But no, he put another medicine to sleep. And I just thought I shouldn't be here. I have to find my way. My name is Poppy. I'm 19 years old and I am training part-time to be a healer. I also work at a falafel restaurant. <laughs> I think I had quite a difficult early adolescence. I struggled with depression and anxiety and undiagnosed OCD for quite a few years. I think that began at the age of like 10 or 11. Um, I had really intense depression and it was kind of a difficult time because in depression there's no, you don't, you don't call out for help if you don't feel there's help to cry for. It got progressively worse. And then at about 14 or 15, I became uh, introduced to drugs and became very addicted to drugs. And that lasted until I was about 16. 
I went to a rehab facility and I really found what was meaningful to me and who I was. And I think that was lacking as a sense of self. And I found spirituality that way. There was so much incongruency. I was either incredibly sad or incredibly elated in a kind of manic way. Um, there's, there was no neutral, there was no balance. I think that comes with addiction. There's the kind of intense need for like gratification and validation, but also the intense need to numb everything out and to be alone and to isolate. That, that feeling of being in two places at once was really painful. It is really abundantly clear that anyone my, I know my age has some, some sort of, either it's anxiety, depression, eating disorder or addiction. I don't know anyone my age that doesn't have that. And that doesn't really seem quite right. I also think we're uneducated about how much our emotions are important, how little we're taught to express them. We're not taught how to. I was at an adolescent rehab centre where you're not allowed to, your rights are, you sign over your rights. So being forced to accept your position in life is a real, was a real kick up the arse, I think. The pain that I'm experiencing is information. There's an information coming through to me about something that needs to be changed or altered to come back to where I ought to be, which is a p place of acceptance and a kind of relaxed state of being. A lot of our thoughts are culturally created about some, how something ought to be, which can contradict a kind of an inner wisdom that I have. And sometimes this is very natural and very human. You know, which way, which choice do I make? Do I, go, do, do I go with my intuition? Do I go with my mind? And often my mind is fear-driven. Our intuition is often free. It's teaching us something wise that often contradicts our mind. Over time, I've learned to trust my intuition more and more. Modern society really caught up with money and how to live, like you have to work, you have to, have to. And I was like kind of like in a box. And then I no noticed like, ah, oh, there's a big sky and so many different type of people, so many live life. When I was a child, I couldn't move my body very well. Even like this was pain, <laughs> that much painful. I never done any exercise until I met yoga. So start with just like this, not only this, <laughs> once a month. I don't think we're taught to put ourselves first, not selfishly, but just for our own, you know, self-care. I used to think I was kind of a victim of being alive. I was a victim of the world and that uh, you're born alone, you die alone. That was really my mentality. I used to notice that I might have an anxious thought, but that it was, it was just a thought. I quite quickly noticed that the I that was having the thought was very different. And that the I was um, always there, it was like the sun was always shining. The thought might be like a a cloud that was passing by, that was obscuring the sun for a minute, casting a shadow, but that, but that I could look beyond the cloud to the sun. And that, and that kind of calmed, calmed me down, it gave me a different understanding. The more I looked into it, the more I discovered that whatever I was anxious about wasn't really necessarily there, it was just a fantasy. Someone told me that fear is an acronym, F-E-A-R, it stands for false evidence appearing real. It's almost like shadows on the wall. You know, you know those hand puppets, you know, you do a little doggy with a little light here, and it casts this monster on the wall. And sometimes our thoughts are like that, I came to realize. 
One thing that really helped was to breathe in a square. So one side of the square was a two second inhale, two seconds holding it, two seconds exhale, two seconds holding it. That really helped because my kind of OCD would love a kind of geometric meditation. I don't think meditation has to be some terrifying, you know, yogic maneuver. I think even just 30 seconds on the tube, listening to your breath, watching your breath, is just a real help. There are a lot of people who cling to science, what we currently understand the science to be, and say, unless it's proven, I'm not interested. I mean, that is certainly one way of getting through life, but it's, it's a very, to my mind, restricted way of getting through life. Meditation is, just, is one of the techniques for, for creating greater awareness of the dynamics at play. I think intuition, what we call intuition, um, is one manifestation of what we currently call spirituality. It's a way in which we know something without actually cognitively knowing it. But it just means we're tuned into a, a level of consciousness which is there, but um, which we generally dismiss. Spirituality, I think, is about looking within as opposed to looking out, outside of you, at community or out at God. It's about checking yourself and checking where you're at. Everyone really have a healing power and spiritual power, but they can't use yet. You need to develop by yourself. People not look, really not looking, always looking outside. So who can I can follow? You know, I can follow who this master, this spiritual person. No. Follow your heart, follow inside. That's the only answer. I think a modern spirituality, a modern meditation should focus on the love we have for all living things on this planet and for one another. So that we, so we build a more kind of modest way of being, which deals with our, you know, that desire to acquire material things. So we actually don't need those. What we need is we, we, that's, just, that's just filling a gap, a void. And actually, if there's another path to finding love, love for one another, for ourselves, for one another, and for all living things on this planet, that is the path we absolutely have to take, um, or we are heading towards some kind of destruction. So for me, it's no longer a luxury or a nice thing to have. It's become like an urgent method by which we can live differently.